Let's be real, chocolate chip cookies never disappoint. But when you encounter that truly exceptional cookie, it's a whole different experience. Let me check. How to cook the best pumpkin cookie in the whole world, galaxy, universe, parallel realities, and every dimension known and unknown. You can spice things up with additional flavors, which we're about to do. But fundamentally, cookies require sugar, flour, fat, eggs, and chocolate. In the epic saga of cookie baking, a decisive moment awaits you. As you stand before your mixing bowl, the stakes are high. Do you team up with brown butter, or do you pledge loyalty to the traditional cream butter? Choose wisely, my dear baker. All right, chefs, grab your spatula. It's go time. You're right, Puma. Begin by measuring out 140 grams of butter. We'll go with team brown butter. Simply melt the butter over heat and let it bubble away until it reaches that golden brown perfection. Butter is melted and cooked until the water content evaporates and the milk solids begin to brown. Opt for brown butter when you want a more complex, rich and nutty flavor in your cookies. Continue stirring frequently to ensure the butter browns uniformly. As soon as you spot the butter turning a deep brown with little bits, it's time to take it out of the pan. Let the butter cool before moving on. In order to achieve the best results, you will mix a combination of sugars. To get just that right amount of sweetness, you need 70 Ouch. grams white sugar and also 120 grams brown sugar. Then, you will pour in that liquid gold. Brown butter always delivers on the money. In a large bowl, whisk together the lukewarm brown butter, light brown sugar, and white sugar until well combined. The mixture will look like wet sand. Add two teaspoons of vanilla extract, two egg yolks, and 80 grams of pumpkin puree. Whisk for a few minutes until the mixture has lightened in color. Puma, check this out. I think they used gluten-free flour. Where the fl is everyone? Holy guacamole, you are most correct. We need to talk. Onto the dry stuff. We combined in this larger spoon, one teaspoon of salt and our three spices. Next is one teaspoon of baking powder and half teaspoon of baking soda. Toss in the flour gradually, roughly half at a time to keep your kitchen from looking like a flour storm hit you hard. Mix until the flour is just incorporated and you no longer see any loose flour in the mix. Toss in 100 grams of chopped chocolate 50 grams chocolate chips. 70% cocoa is usually my choice. I guess the darker the better. Choose the percentage of cocoa that your discerning palate enjoys most. Walnuts join the party last, adding 50 grams of crunch. I must admit, I was a bit timid with the chocolate. Throw in an extra 100 grams. I skipped it, and let me tell you, the sting of regret is real. We gave our cookie dough a timeout in the fridge, so the scooping process should be easier. Press the dough firmly into the scooper. It will do two things. One, ensures your cookies are matched in size. Two, stops any sneaky sideways sliding when they hit the oven. Don't crowd the cookies as they will spread during baking. Set your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius and bake those bad boys for 12 to 14 minutes. Keep an eye out for golden brown edges, but leave the middle slightly underdone. They'll firm up into chewy perfection as they cool down and watch them. I honestly thought they'd mastered social distancing and agreed to a no-touching policy, but clearly, they had other plans. Sometimes things don't go as expected, but we are learning from our mistakes and moving on to the next attempt. This time, I pretty much played it safe. I usually like to add extra toppings on the cookie dough balls right before they hit the oven to make sure that they're extra pretty. But today, I'm keeping it simple. No frills. They'll still taste out of this world delicious. <laughs> I let the cookies cool down on the tray until they're just right. Waiting is super hard when they smell so good. It's a battle of wills, me versus warm, tempting cookies. Spoiler alert, the cookies often win. And voila, all you need to know about these tasty brown butter mm. pumpkin chocolate chip cookies. Imagine a cookie that tastes like fall and happiness. That's what these are, pure cookie magic. Cosmo approved and ready for Q&A. Pumpkin cookies can quickly become too cakey, which isn't ideal. 
We aim for cookies with crisp edges and a gooey or chewy center. Something like this. To avoid cakiness, our recipe uses only egg yolks and browned butter, which has less moisture than regular butter. This helps keep the right texture. Long ago, sifting flour was essential. It has become somewhat old-fashioned as this process isn't typically needed with today's manufacturing standards. If you're not working with a delicate texture where the goal is light and fluffy, think angel cakes, sponge cakes, a quick whisk to aerate the flour is enough to bake those lovely pumpkin cookies. Oh! Want to keep all your cookies to yourself? Try these unusual cookie cutters that make each cookie look like it's already been bitten. Fresh from the oven, these bite mark treats are sure to keep cookie thieves at bay. For those of us with a memory span, shorter than my buddies here, the one with gills, let's dive one more time into that ingredients list. Need more info on this recipe? We are just a comment away. Got an appetite for more? Dive into this next video.